Hellcats, welcome back to another episode of Intoxicated. I'm your host, Kelsey Davies, and I am here by myself all by myself here. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these alone. This isn't really a podcast that focuses on the guests. It's basically just cool people I meet and I want them to come and just talk about cool shit with me. So there won't always be a guest on this podcast, but it's still going to be interesting and I am still intoxicated. I smoked marijuana. I think I smoked, I smoked a sativa. I think it was like green crack or something. I don't know. It's probably something like that, but I'm feeling really good. We got some interesting things to talk about today. So I'm super excited. Make sure you guys are following me on social media. All platforms is K E L S I I D A V I E S S. So you guys can follow me on my life journey. I also have a YouTube and you can watch the video version of this podcast on my YouTube. It is K E L S I space. D-A-V-I-E-S, that's Kelsey Davies, not Davis. Elsie Davies. But last time on Intoxicated, we talked about Japanese urban legends. We talked about a couple that were really creepy, but I have some more for you that we need to dig into. So my cliffhanger ending on the last podcast was about Tiki Tiki. That's T-E-K-E, spelt twice. I think that's Tiki Tiki, Teki Teki something like that, something creepy. So it says it's named after the tapping sound that this poor soul makes while moving around. Tiki Tiki is the upper half of a woman who accidentally fell onto the tracks at a subway station and was cut in half. Her rage at this untimely death is considered to be so powerful that she still roams around looking for vengeance. Oof, this is creepy, guys. Legend has it that regardless of whether you try to run from her or not, crossing her path means certain death. Well, that sucks. Like... You don't even have a choice on this one. The other ones you had like kind of a choice. If you guys listened to my last episode, um, we discussed a couple and you actually like have somewhat of a choice, but this one, if you just see her, then you just fucking die. Like that sucks. So the way that you die is the exact same way as her. I'm like, what if, I wonder if you only rub in, I only rub into her. <laughs> what? No, don't do that. I only if you only run into her at like subway stations, because if you're in the middle of somewhere else, I don't think a subway train track is just going to appear. You know, I mean, that would be kind of really creepy, but I don't think that's what's going to happen here. So, I mean, be careful when you're going on a subway, especially in Japan, if you guys are out there. I mean, it seems like she... I mean, this legend did start there, so I'm sure that there are sightings of her out there. That's really freaking creepy, though. Next is the Red Room Curse. The Red Room story is an internet legend about a pop-up that appears on the victim's computer. Ew, so it's like a virus demon type thing. The image simply shows a door and a recorded voice asks, Do you like the Red Room? What is up with red and blue in like these legends? What's up with the color red? Those who have seen the pop-up are found dead, their walls painted red in their own blood. The legend began with a flash animation of a boy being cursed after encountering the pop-up but gained notoriety when it was found that the schoolgirl who had committed the Sasebo slashing in 2004 had the video as a bookmark. Okay, what is the Sasebo slashing? Let's look into that real quick. Some ASMR for you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the ASMR. I hate that noise. Like, I don't think, like, I don't know. Maybe some people like it. I don't really like that noise, though. Okay, I found the Sasebo slashing. Oh, this just gets creepier. This is going into a whole different story. Okay, so this is also, so this, this, Oh my god, I can't speak. The Sasebo slashing, also known as Nevada Tan Murder, was the murder of a 12-year-old Japanese schoolgirl, Satomi Mitarai, 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 by an 11-year-old female classmate referred to as Girl A. The murder occurred on June 1st, 2004 at an elementary school in the city of Sasebo in Nagasaki, Prefecture. The murderer slit Mitarai's throat and arms with a box cutter. What? Ooh, 
that like stings just thinking about that. Reactions to the incident included internet memes and a discussion of lowering the age of criminal responsibility in Japan. The killer's name has not been released to the press as per Japanese legal procedures prohibiting the identification of juvenile offenders. But I guess her name was accidentally revealed in a Fuji TV broadcast. So this unidentified girl that committed the murder, she had the Red Room curse as a video on her computer. What? This reminds me of like the Slender Man story. If you guys haven't heard of this, there were like two 12 year old girls or something who like tried to kill their friend, but their friend miraculously like survived. She had like so many wounds. Wait, let me look this up real quick. So on May 31st, 2014 in Wisconsin, Two 12-year-old girls, Anissa Weyer and Morgan Geyser, lured their friend Peyton into a forest and stabbed her 19 times. Like, this girl got stabbed 19 times and survived. That is insane. And they stabbed her in attempt to become proxies of the fictional character Slender Man, or some say he isn't so fictional. She recovered after six days in the hospital, and both of the girls were found not guilty by mental disease or defect and committed to mental health institutions for sentences of 25 and 40 years. So these girls were dedicated to Slender Man, like this internet legend type thing or said to be started by the internet. But this like red room thing just reminds me of that. Like what is up with these? Could could there really be internet curses? Could there really be like, maybe Slender Man started out as an internet meme, but you know, demons sense negativity. Maybe they could have like manifested themselves as a Slender Man looking character and it could become a real thing. I don't know. I'm really high, but um, it just makes you think. I don't know if you see any pop-ups like that on your computer, make sure to not watch them, exit out, or apparently you will be cursed. I didn't even think about that because technology has such a big effect on like the supernatural world. Like they use so much technology for energy for to manipulate it to like it's so crazy to think that like it's like the more technology that we have would there be more like spiritual development or spiritual awakening in a way because of all the energy being like put out to us daily does that make sense because like back in the day they didn't have a lot of electricity not a lot of energy coming at them all day like we have our phones in our hands all that electricity we have like our cars, we have our TVs, we have lights. Like, it's just like, it makes you think like, can spirits, can it make the spirit world or spirit realm more powerful in some way with our evolution in technology? And that is my TED talk. Thank you. Going into Tamino's poem, the popular Japanese story is about a poem called Tamino's Hell. Oof, that doesn't sound very good. They say that you should only read with your mind and never out loud. Bro, I just heard like a weird tapping sound on my ceiling. What the fuck? If you guys don't follow me on YouTube, my apartment is haunted. So that was kind of creepy that right when I was reading about this. I hated that. I don't like it. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, <laughs> it says, so you should only read this poem with your mind and never out loud. If you were to read it out loud, then you die. This story used to be very popular in 2CH. I'm guessing that's like maybe a, a website or something. And there were many people taking pictures and videos as proof and posting them on this website. There were many users that said nothing had happened, but there were also many posts that didn't have the users come back to post their results. So what happened to these users? Is it possible that they actually died from reading this poem out loud? I mean, I guess if it was a poem written in a way to summon something, maybe that could be like a possibility, but ooh, what makes like, how does a poem become cursed like that? Unless there was like a bunch of like, I don't know, witchcraft or some shit done on it. Let me know what you guys think. I'm like curious. 
Ew, okay, bro, the picture scared me. <laughs> it's like this really creepy looking face and it has two giant eyes and like its mouth is smiling. It doesn't really look like it has a nose. It's just, it's really unsettling, this photo. It's Gozu, which another name is Oxhead. Gozu is a story that was supposedly discovered in Japanese literature during the 17th century. It is said that those who read or narrate the story are sent into a catatonic state where their minds are trapped in another dimension shortly before they die. I wonder why though, like how do these legends start? Who would think of these things? And how would so many people like have the same story to the point where it becomes a legend? That's just what blows my mind. I'm like so many people really believed in this legend and it really stuck with them. Cause you know, you someone tells you a scary story and you're just like, all right, you know, whatever. But like to have it repeated so many times it becomes world known, that's pretty scary to me. There has to be some truth to that. Ew, this one's creepy. It's called The Girl in the Gap. Japanese superstition holds that a spirit lives between the gaps of things like furniture and slightly open doors. Ew, and I have had experiences where I've seen something peeking at me like through the crack of a door. I've had that before. Oh, that makes me like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like it. If you lock eyes with the girl in the gap, it will ask you to play hide and seek. That's fucking creepy. Come play with me. Let's play hide and seek. Oh, I like hide and seek. Oh, she says I like it. She says I like it. I'm so fucking weird. Okay. But while playing, if you were to see the eyes in the gap again, you will be instantly instantly transported to hell what so you're playing hide and go seek you lock eyes with her one more time and all of a sudden like you don't win the fucking game like you found the bitch but now you're instantly transported to the worst place fucking possible like they could have brought us to the dmv and we would have been pretty fucking miserable but no we got to be transported down into the depths of whatever into hell. That fucking sucks. Dude, these legends are insane. So many of them are like paranormal too, like spirits and stuff, not as much monsters. I mean, I guess there could be demonic entities that manifest themselves as some sort of monster looking thing. But I wanna lighten up the mood a little bit here because that got really dark and really creepy and I did not like the tap on my ceiling. That did not make me comfortable. But I wanna talk about a couple readings I did recently. If you guys don't follow me on social media or follow this podcast, I am a psychic medium. So it runs in my family and you can learn a lot more about my gifts just throughout my social media. There's interviews online you can listen to and watch and I just go more into depth with it so if you guys want to check that out just go check it out there is a little highlight in my Instagram bio and it says interviews so you can go like check that out if you really want to I don't know so the thing about me that a lot of people get misconstrued I don't know if that's the right word misconstrued um, is that I am a full-on like full-time psychic medium and I charge for readings. I don't do that. I don't charge for readings. I am coming into my mediumship a lot more, but it's just something that I've had and I've always had it since I was young that I just wanted to embrace more publicly. And there's been a lot of scammers on Instagram and stuff like charging for readings and it's not me. So don't ever pay someone who's pretending to be me for a reading because I do not charge for readings. I do them mainly for for family and friends and people that I just run into. And if a spirit comes to me for them, like I'll definitely give them a reading or if they're asking me to, like I just do it. It's just something that is really cool to me and I love to practice. So I'm more focused on other aspects in my career, but that's just something that is authentically me. So it's just something I, I like to share everywhere. Anyways, I went on a Disney cruise and I met a lot of TikTok creators and I met this family. They're the McFarlane on TikTok. Let me get their handle so you guys can go follow them. But they are some of the nicest people I've ever met. It's the dot McFarlane's M C F A R L A N D S. But they make super funny content. They're so wholesome and just so kind. 
and they're super into the paranormal they definitely believe in it they believe it's there so it was really interesting because i had a few people come to me for them so i was just talking to them and all of a sudden this spirit she started making her presence known so aggressively like i had to pay attention sometimes it's a lighter energy and i'm just like and eh, whatever but she really really wanted my attention so i was like Okay, so I started tapping into it more, and we were in the middle of Epcot, which is in Disney World. It was so random. Like, sometimes it's that random. But she came to me, and she kept fluttering her arms like a bird, like goofing around the goofiest lady ever. Like, she was just so funny and kind, and she was just, like, fluttering her hands, like, just goofing around. And she kept flashing with her hands a number, and it was seven. And I was really confused. So I asked Dan, he is the dad of the family, and... And I was like, how many siblings do you have? Because that's the only thing I could think of with like a number. And he was like, seven. And I was like, that's interesting. I think someone's here for you. And he was like, oh my gosh, who, you know? And so I started really tapping in and I got her name. And I was like, B Betty? And he was like, oh my gosh, his face just lit up. And he was like, that's my mother. Like she was super duper goofy she loved birds so she kept fluttering her arms showing me that she liked birds or like she liked tweety bird like she was just goofing around like that and I, I think that she knew he would pick up on like her fluttering her arms and stuff so it was really interesting it's a it's crazy when i get the names because names are super difficult for me spirits usually show me things so to, for them to show me their name sometimes is very hard and it's been getting a lot stronger which is just, i'm so grateful for it but i've been practicing so that was just really cool to get the name like when you get that it's just undeniable and then dan's wife kathleen she had a man with her and he was very a very light energy but i just kept seeing her next to him and she was super curious she was like i want to know if anyone's with me and i was like there is a man with you and she was like okay like can you describe him more and i kept feeling some pain in my chest so i was like i feel like there was um something with his chest like his heart area i just feel a lot of pressure here and she was like okay like i i think i might know who you're talking about and i kept she's like tell me more you know she wanted me to practice so i was like okay and i kept saying he was just very mellow like he kind of just enjoyed life sat back he didn't talk a whole lot like he was a very kind man but he was just very to himself so i explained that to her i didn't feel like it was like her biological father i just felt like it was a father figure in her life so i told her i was like i feel like he was a father figure to you like very important to you and she just was like, oh my gosh, I know exactly who you're talking about. And it was her stepfather that came to me and his name was Ralph. So that was that was really cool too. I just had to share that because it just makes me so happy doing things like this. There was also another family on the boat. I did so many readings that, that trip. It was so crazy. And they were the Scories. You can find them on TikTok as well. S-K-O-R-Y-S. -S. They're super, super friendly as well and they were kind of asking about my mediumship and I saw a man with them as well. So I looked at one of the brothers and I was like, did you lose your grandfather? And he was like, yeah, we did. And I was like, he is here on this cruise ship. We were on a cruise and he is so excited to be here. Like he made sure that he came with you guys on this cruise ship specifically. And I also explained these weird looking, like kind of boat looking shoes that he was wearing and his golden wedding ring. He was showing me that because his wife is still alive. So I told them all that and they were like, he loved cruises. Like he would travel the world. He absolutely loved cruise ships. Like that was his thing. So they were not surprised that he was there they confirmed he did have his gold wedding ring that he was showing me and right when i mentioned the shoes they were like oh my gosh he had such weird looking shoes and like it was just so so cool i just love I just love when it gets specific like that. I usually explain the clothes they're wearing because people wear different things, you know? It's like, it's just like a way for people to express themselves and who they are and what they're comfortable wearing. I think that clothes have a lot of meaning, so that's why I usually explain
explain that they're clothing. But moving forward, I am super excited because I'm going to Thailand. I am so stoked. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna make paranormal content there too and vlogging. I'm just so excited to finally travel the world. We went to the Bahamas. That was my first time ever leaving the country. Even though we only got to stay there for like a day because we were it was part of the cruise. I just am so excited to travel to different locations around the world and explore all the different legends. And I want to go into some of the creepiest like Thailand paranormal legends. First, we're gonna go into Krasu. That's K-R-A-S-U-E. Once a beautiful woman who was burned to death, Krasu is cursed to be forever hungry. So she, that would really suck. I'm sorry, but if you were hungry forever, that's torture. And so sets off each night in search of blood and flesh. She can't just eat like a piece of pizza, bro. Okay. Living as a normal person day by day, by nightfall, the head detaches from the body into the frightful sight. A floating head with viscera dangling below. Krasu will dine on animals if she can't find a pregnant lady or newborn baby. So she aims for pregnant women and newborn babies? Oh my gosh. And will wipe her bloody mouth on clothes hanging outside, which is why ties ensure not to leave things out overnight. What? I'm going to have to ask like some locals if they don't leave their clothing out because of this woman. I guess some people have found blood on their clothes if they leave them hanging out at night. Oh my god, that is beyond creepy. I wonder what'll happen if I ask like if they'll be scared or if they won't believe it. I feel like a lot of them believe in these legends though. It seems like a very big thing in Thailand, which I really like because I'm super spiritual and open-minded and they all have these really interesting legends and and beliefs and I'm just I'm so excited to experience the culture, not just the location, but the life there, I'm just so excited to experience that. Next is my Nak. May Nak? Nak was beautiful, pregnant, and truly in love. All was well until her husband was conscripted to fight in the war. While he was away, May and the baby both passed away in childbirth. Mm, that's really sad. The husband returns to find his wife and baby and is warned by the villagers that she is now a ghost. The husband realizes once he sees Nack stretch her arms out and pick up something, he flees. With Nack in hot pursuit, he hides amongst a ghost-proof plant before heading to the sanctuary of a temple. Nack was exercised twice by monks, confined firstly to a jar and secondly to a waistband in that and it's said that the royal family of Thailand has that waistband today. What? I wonder if that's a true story. It's just interesting that the royal family of Thailand is said to have the waistband, like to have this object. Next is Pret, said to be tall as a palm tree. Fuck that shit, that's scary. Oh my gosh, imagine like a tall, slender looking ghost creature the size of a freaking palm tree that would be really horrifying especially to see at night like you look out your window and you just see that walking all slow ew i'm creeping myself out pret are ghosts that are prominent in buddhist folklore folklore <laughs> Folklore. Ungrateful and materialistic people are reincarnated as Pret, a tall being with a ravenous appetite that can't be satisfied from its tiny pinhole mouth. Oh my gosh, which it's which it earned from talking back to its parents. I feel like this is like a legend to scare children to behave. Pret spend their days begging for forgiveness and are celebrated with their own festival in southern Thailand. They have an entire festival. I wonder if people dress up like them. Like tall and slender with a pinhole mouth, like a tiny little hole. It kind of reminds me like what I was thinking of is like a, a daddy long leg, how they're all like... They're all long, but they're like said to be super poisonous, but they can't bite through like human skin or something because their mouth is too small. That's just something I heard when I was little. I don't know if that's true, but 
That's what it reminded me of. Next is Krahang. Thought to occupy the same spaces as Krasu, Krahang is a male ghost who too spends his days in disguise of an ordinary villager but then transforms at night. Shirtless and covered below the waist by a loin cloth, Krahang takes the skies with the aid of rice baskets acting as wings. <laughs> what? This guy's just flying with freaking rice baskets. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? And has been blamed for attacks on women in local villages. I could just imagine like some dude just trying to like scare the shit out of people and he grabs two rice baskets and just starts flapping his wings. <laughs> I mean, it could be real, but like, that's just kind of weird. I don't know how he would fly with rice baskets. I'm like trying to picture it. Maybe it's cooler than it sounds. <laughs> Next one is Phi Pop. It's P-H-I Pop. I don't know if that's Phi or P, P Pop. <laughs> I'm probably butchering these names, by the way, so don't quote me on them. Thought to roam around the northeastern region of Isan, Phi Pop is a fearful ghost who possesses the bodies of her victims and hunts for raw meat before eventually eating their intestines from the inside. Those who are thought to be possessed by a Phi Pop, I really don't know if I'm saying this right, need to undergo an exorcism in the form of a dance which drives the ghost away. To this day, this ghost is blamed for deaths in both Thailand and Laos. So people blame these creatures for deaths. This one is Fee Am. Anybody who has suffered from sleep paralysis may want to stop reading this now. Ooh, I've had sleep paralysis too many times, but I'm gonna keep reading it. Fiam is a ghost who is said to sit on the chests of people while they sleep, causing discomfort and even death. That's like a really common thing too when people have sleep paralysis. They feel like someone is pressing down on their chest and a lot of the time it's believed to be paranormal, which I think a lot of the time it is paranormal related. But for these ones, there is a way to combat them. It says to put on lipstick. Fee Am, don't attack women and those who believe in their existence. Put on lipstick before sleeping to trick Fee Am into thinking they are female. Okay, so just sleep with lipstick on and you're good to go. Rip to your pillowcase though. You have like lipstick everywhere when you wake up. But it says if you have a beard, she will probably see right through it. So shave off your beard, put on some lipstick, and you're good to go. Fi Tai Hong, one of the most feared and most dangerous ghost types in Thailand. They are said to be ghosts of people who suffered violent or sudden deaths. They are angry and dangerous in the afterlife. The most feared of all are those who died while pregnant, as the presence of two spirits is particularly powerful. Blamed for haunted houses and particularly difficult to exercise, they are not somebody you want to meet on the back street of Khao San Road. So I guess that road is where they often see them. Oh gosh, this one's creepy. Phi Lang Kluong. <laughs> I'm so bad. I need to learn Thai, okay? So these are ghosts in the south of Thailand who will join your group on the beach and will seem somewhat normal until they ask someone to scratch their back. Okay, first of all, if you're sitting on the beach and some random person comes up to you, I don't think I would scratch their back. Like if they asked, I would be like, scratch your own back. Like I'm not gonna scratch stranger's back. That's just kind of weird. Upon doing so, their terrifying secret will be revealed. A gaping wound right through the body, festering with maggots, worms, and millipedes. Be careful who you share your bucket with. That's fucking nasty. Like, first of all, if you're gonna go scratch a stranger's back and like, if they're shirtless and you're getting like their dead skin under your nails, that's all I think about. Like if you're like scratching someone or itching them, it's like you're getting all those dead skin sales all that like gross shit in there. And what if they have like moles and shit on their back? Like what if their backs are all lumpy? Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so weird with that stuff. I'm like, I don't want to itch your back if you have like, like weird shit growing out of it. Especially if it has freaking maggots and millipedes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, hold on. Wait. Phi key, key which translates to poop. <laughs> I, what? There's a ghost for everything. Okay. This is a ghost that occupies your toilet. <laughs> and they named it Phi Key, which key is. They named it Phi Poop. <laughs> they must be consulted before your toilet is used and after a bad dream. As doing so, we'll see bad luck being removed from you via your excrement. <laughs> Perhaps not the scariest of ghosts, it's worth having a chat with it if you're set on eating nothing but questionably clean street food while you're here. As there's not much scarier than having food poisoning and access to only a squat toilet. There's a freaking... Poop ghost? Wh Who ordered the poo poo platter? <laughs> Bugs Life, anyone? <laughs> that is my favorite scene from Bugs Life, by the way. I just can't wait to go to Thailand and see if the locals believe in these legends or if they've experienced anything with these legends. I really want to know about the poop ghost. Like, for super curious. But I wanted to mention something. So, the other day, I was standing outside of the Cecil Hotel. Don't know if you guys have heard of this hotel, but it is so freaking haunted like probably one of the most haunted hotels i've ever heard of with the amount of deaths that have happened there the amount of mysteries uh richard ramirez he was a serial killer he lived there for months and killed people there but we were standing outside and i actually got a couple spirits coming to me and i wrote down a couple things they said i wanted to share it with you guys before i post a video so i got the name helen I also got the name Margaret. She said something about this like seventh floor. She said seventh and jump. And we looked it up, okay? So I wrote this down in front of, I was with Mackenzie Marie and a couple other friends and I wrote it down right in front of them. And we all looked it up after. We found out there was a woman named Helen who was staying at the hotel, but she wrote her name in as Margaret Brown, I believe. So I wrote Helen and Margaret, okay? Get this. She wrote like a fake name for whatever reason. Clearly she was hiding from something or didn't want anyone to know where she was. And she jumped from the seventh floor. And I wrote seventh. I also had another person coming to me and they said to stay away from the fifth floor. And I was like, why the fifth floor? Like I asked my friend and she was like, did you know that Elisa Lamb stayed on the fifth floor? That was her floor, apparently. And I had no fucking idea. I thought that she was on the 14th floor, but apparently that's the last floor she was ever seen on. I also got, he followed me in and I was not alone. And this was standing outside of the Cecil Hotel, which I will get back into in the next episode of Intoxicated. Thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. You guys can stay updated if you go to my YouTube channel. That is K-E-L-S-I-D-A-V-I-E-S. -E -E you can also follow me on all social media. It is K-E-L-S-I-I-D-A-V-I-E-S-S. -S. We're getting close to 5 million TikTok followers. That is insane. So thank you guys so so much i also decided that i am going to get a tattoo of lola's doll that's my haunted doll i'm gonna get a tattoo of her on me obviously on me so make sure you guys are following me on tiktok and i will catch you guys in the next episode stay woke everyone